abortion of the birth to their Stop Stella campaign, which explicitly encourages people to target me as a hypocrite for being pregnant and advocating for the right of all women to choose when to leave. Absolutely. Shame. Shame. Walthamstow residents have made clear their distress at this behaviour. So have I. And that they've made their point and they disagree with me. I understand that and ask them not to continue. Despite this, they have already stated they will keep returning and targeting me until I stop campaigning. Already, I have received numerous threats and abusive messages which directly quote their material. As you expect, Mr. Speaker, I have sought police assistance against this harassment. I'm sad to report as yet none has been given, including from the parliamentary authorities, although Sadiq Khan and Claire Foghill, the leader of my council, have been fantastic allies. And I have proposals for the domestic abuse bill, which I hope ministers will look on kindly to recognise as forms of abuse. As I've always said to colleagues, it's not my time we're going to waste. However, Mr Speaker, perhaps one of the troubling things about importing this kind of campaigning into our politics, because they have said now they are going to extend their process to other MPs, and they're clearly influencing debate in this way, as some, even in this chamber, have said that I wish to kill babies, mm. is how it's funded. Mr. Speaker, this organisation claims to be a charity in its constitution and its account, and in the statement it made to the BBC last October. Yet the Charity Commission has refused to register them. Nor is it clear whether they have repaid the gift aid that they previously claimed under the auspices of this charity status. If not, given that they knew they weren't registered with the Charity Commission, this group has facilitated tax evasion, which of course is a criminal offence. Nor is it clear if they are complying with the rules for third-party campaigners in the run-up to an election or whether they are accepting illegal foreign donations, given that they are part of a network of such organisations across the world. Sadly, as I understand, they've also threatened to sue journalists who ask them about these matters, so we cannot have clarity about who is funding this sustained campaign of intimidation. From an organisation whose counterparts in other countries have picketed maternity hospitals with baby coffins, and incited such hatred and radicalisation that it has resulted in violence, including a mass shooting in a planned parenthood in Colorado. Given the call for a general election, tackling the potential consequences of organisations on this on our public debate must indeed be a priority for the Charity Commission, the Electoral Commission, and indeed HMRC to investigate. I'm sure we would all want to know whether all taxes are paid, all donations declared, and all donors <coughs> legal to such groups. But I'm not sure, Mr Speaker, where we as parliamentarians can start in holding such a company to account for the toxic culture and approach they're bringing and the absence of police action. We cannot uphold free speech on any issue if we do not also hold to account those who seek to abuse it and the laws around campaigning. So perhaps, Mr Speaker, you have some suggestions for me so that we can ensure no MP, and indeed no other woman, has to go through what I've been going through in the last few days. Good on her. I thank the Honourable Lady for her point of order. At the outset, I know she'll understand if I say that in respect to some of the other matters to do with tax treatment, funding, that she mentioned, I cannot comment. It's perfectly reasonable for the Honourable Lady to set out those matters, but they don't require a response from me, and it would not in any way be authoritative. However, as far as what I regard as her major point is concerned, I will be absolutely explicit in my response. I believe that campaigning of that kind with the intensity involved and the explicit public threat to its apparently endless continuation is vile, unconscionable and despicable. There is a major difference, and it is important that we should be clear about this, between putting a point of view with considerable force and insistence on the matter of abortion or any other matter of public dispute on the one hand, and putting it in extreme and provocative terms, and in doing so, saying, we will go on doing so until you stop exercising your right as a member of parliament to campaign for what you want. Give in to our intimidation, our threats and our bullying, or it will be the worse for you. That to me, colleagues, I hope I carry the support of the majority.
majority of the House in saying this, is rank unacceptable. And it displays, if I may say so, and I will, an absence of any moral compass. Anybody who thinks seriously about these matters cannot seriously think that that is right. It would be wrong in any case that for the Honourable Lady to be subject to that treatment when she herself is pregnant and those intimidating and harassing her ultimately unsuccessfully know that to be so is doubly appalling. With reference to what the Honourable Lady said, and it is a challenge which I take in good part, about thus far an absence of support from the House authorities, I am very disappointed to learn of that. I can't comment on the particulars. What I do undertake to do is to meet the Honourable Lady within 24 hours if she wishes to meet me, and I will as appropriate, be accompanied by people in this House who are best placed to advise. I'm delighted that the Mayor of London and his team are supporting her, but she is entitled to proper and unstinting support from the House authorities. If she feels that that is not the case, and there is more that we can do, or things that we haven't done at all that we should be doing, then I'm determined that she should get that help. The Honourable Lady, of course I will come to the Minister, the Honourable Lady is respected across this House as an extremely dedicated, articulate and principled campaigner for her causes. For her causes. Nothing on earth can be allowed to prevent her continuing in that vein. And although it is not a matter of order within the Chamber, it is right that she should seek the support of Parliament's spokesperson as she wants to reinforce her right to go about her business in a legitimate way. She has that right, and I stand absolutely with her in insisting on the continued exercise of that 